Welcome to the Global Author Podcast. I'm Matt Connor Whiteley, science fiction, fantasy, and a global author, bringing you publishing, writing, book marketing, and a global author ideas of your book to help you sell more books and write better books. For more information and your free global author training, please go to theglobalauthor.com. And here's the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 53 of Global Author Podcast with me, Connor Wiley. And today's episode is on why Spotify moving into audiobooks is amazing for global authors. Absolutely love this talk. This is brilliant. I'm so passionate about this because I was attending London Book Fair this week and there was a great talk on it. And wow, this was just, I really do want to share what I learned um, with you. But just so when Spotify does become more accessible for us independent authors and us global authors, we can take full advantage of it because this I really am looking forward to. This really will be great. Okay, so before we move on to the content part of today's episode, I just I want to give you a quick a personal update. So this week I've been doing tons of fiction, tons of different bits and pieces. For example, I'm 19 chapters into a new novella, so that's Heart of a Bone. So yes, then I've sort of planned it, so that's about 25 chapters long. So I'm almost done with a novella. I started that Sunday. Yes, that's you listen to this, and I just remember to to mention that it's Saturday the 26th of June 2021 as I recall this so I've been really busy with this novella but there are a few things I wanted to mention though so yes I was attending London Book Fair this week I was like online and there's tons of great information information like, that I've learned to like for example like the licensing so there's so many really great things that I've really enjoyed and I will talk about them on the podcast in a future episode perhaps so I'm really like loving like, Heart of a Bones and I should have finished that next week and then I sort of have to go on to non-fiction because I sort of need a massive like palette cleanser because I've done two novellas straight off the back from each other and that is really really tiring uh, so I really do want to work on some non-fiction but Next week, I also plan to do the Global Author Training video, which will now be the exclusive sign-up. So I'll be working on that, and I hope to get everything done within one week. So hopefully when you listen to episode 54, the intros should be slightly different to advertise the new Global Author um, Training video. So that I really am looking forward to it, because I've been meaning to do it all of this year, but now I'm making sure that I have time to do it, because... It's only when I can do the training videos, then can I upload the podcast to YouTube. And judging by my experiments so far with my psychology podcast on YouTube, I really do want to start getting the Global Author podcast up on YouTube, just so I can tap into that market a bit more. But yes, and then the only other thing that I wanted to say was though was that it was a Prime Day, so that's like a um, Amazon thing, and there was a great deal on this sort of like scratch off map. And for a this while, like I've been thinking. Wouldn't it be great if I got a map of the world and I sort of um, pricked pins in every country that I sold a countries in? So I was thinking about that. Then it came to Prime Day and I saw this like scratch off one. I was thinking, but this is great. So if I so if I buy this and I scratch off the countries that I've sold books in because it's now 33 countries, then that's amazing. So I'm still worth doing that. I started it earlier in the week, but I want to finish it today. So I will take a photo and put it on Twitter or the globalauthor.com just so I can um, visually see how many countries have, or so many countries that I've sold books in there. So I really am looking forward to that. But the last thing that I wanted to mention in uh, this uh, personal update was that something quite interesting happened this week. That was, I was writing along, and what I tend to do when I'm writing is I tend to have a, a like, YouTube playlist of some like, dramatic music. Uh, and I got so annoyed with YouTube because there were so many ads uh, these are days. So I just went, right, I've had enough of YouTube because from twenty from December 2019, YouTube really has been in increasing its ads. So that's when I first thought, why well, I should just buy this music from the artist just so I don't have to put up with YouTube. And I sort of like forgot about it. I've sort of not really done it. Uh, Oh, done it though so I like I did that and then it got to one point this week week though and I just went nope I cannot put up with this anymore though because whenever there's an ad or whenever there's a really loud ad or really unique one it kicks me out of the um creative flow so I got really annoyed about that and then I sort of went right so I'm not going to buy this music from the artist and I really do love Zane Wolf stuff. It's not his real name, but he really does do some great dramatic music that I do quite like. So I went to buy them and then I went to his website and he's a really successful indie artist. So I like went there and I wanted to buy direct from him. 
but there wasn't one. I couldn't buy a direct switch. I was a bit like, what? You've got a person like me, and I'm not a hardcore fan. I know he has some major fans out there, but there wasn't any place for me to buy a director from him, so I had to buy the tractor from Amazon, which I was thinking, so a reader like, no, a listener like me couldn't buy a director. So I wonder how many direct sales has he missed. So the point of this is that if you are successful, if you have an audience, definitely set up a direct sales because even if there's the option there, option there, until you have a big audience, you just won't get any direct sales there. But if you're really successful and if you've got a, a good a community of like engaged people, then people will want to buy a direct from you. This is something that I'm beginning to realise like this year because I've already had some direct sales though. So I would say just set it up, just see what happens. Give your readers the choice because you can make a lot more money selling direct than selling through places like Amazon, Kobo, Google Play, etc. So that's just something to think about though. And as always, I always love to know your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. So you can always email me, conwiley, conwiley.net. You can always leave a comment on the show notes at theglobalauthor.com forward slash podcast. And you can always tweet me on Twitter at theglobalauthor. And this episode has been sponsored by Human Branding for Authors, how to be human in an AI world. So the reason why this is a great sponsor for today's episode is that because it's about audio, so this is always a really good chance I'd like to build a human brand and build a, a great brand that readers that want to connect with and that readers want to buy from us. This is really, really interesting. So I really do recommend this a great book because it goes on to so many different aspects and so many different ways how you can build a, a brand that readers want to connect with and buy from. And as authors, that is what we want. So it goes into stuff like using voice, video, social media. So there are so many great tips I really do recommend. So that is a human branding for authors, happy human in an AI world, available from all major ebook retailers and you can order the paperback and the large print editions from Amazon and you are able to get the ebook for free at your local library if you request it. So that's not the personal update, let's move on to the content part of today's episode. So we're moving on to the content part of today's episode. So we're going to be talking about why is Spotify moving into audiobooks amazing for global authors? This I'm just so passionate about. I went to this great talk at the London Book Fair Online, like I said, and there were these two great um, people there. So one was a distributor, then the other one was a two, well, was a massive independent publisher, but it was globally focused. That I was like, oh. That looks great, and it was sort of the. It's so nice to see traditional publishers, even though, well, yeah, to be honest, though, but that independent publisher was a traditional publisher because she publishes other authors. So there was that, and it's so nice to see that some people do have a global focus. And I'm not this a little like crazy person, (laughs) okay? um, So I do just want to say though, quickly that getting our audiobooks on Spotify right now isn't the easiest, but there is a deal between Storytel and Spotify to get audiobooks onto the platform later in 2021, and you can get to Storytel through the wonderful Find Away voices. But please know, this is just an awareness episode. You do not need to do anything right now, and personally, I would say just listen to the episode and become aware of what could be possible within the next year or two. So the first reason I absolutely love Spotify is because of the global reach. This is the best possible reason why it's amazing because the talk mentioned that there are over 250 million subscribers and these are paying ones on Spotify in 178 countries. So I will repeat that over 250 million paying subscribers on Spotify in 178 countries. That's massive. That might be able to beat Kobo's reach, but I doubt it. But that is still massive. This means there are so many people wanting to pay for content. And, and if you kept and if you keep tabs on a Spotify, artists that get paid more when a paying a subscriber listens to one of their books or or, or like one of their songs that kind of pair to a free listen though. So there is there is amazing potential here. But any of your way though, like if you have your books at some time in the future, then your books are going to be available to a truly massive market and your books will be accessible to millions of readers all over the world. And as a global author, that is what we want. We want to make our books available to everyone all over the world and we want to make our books available to as many people as possible and being on Spotify will be a massive help with that. And as this would be a subscription, the readers get it for free 
yes that you still get the page and then 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 you have an amazing sale in that country and then let's say that someone listens to your book in india and you will get paid there's a sale in india but and then if the reader discovers that you have a backlist on spotify then they will listen to the backlist making you even more money but then it gets even better they start to tell their friends about this great author on spotify and then all of this starts the money and reading cycle all all over again and yes and yes i will not lie you will probably just get a small micro payment but micro payments are actually great because all these payments compound over time and most and the most important thing to remember is is that like all of these micro payment services like library subscriptions and spotify they get readers into your ecosystem and once a reader is in your ecosystem they might love your book and they might become a true super fan and even if they don't they're still going to be amazing at people because they might read more of your books though but going back to the true super fan idea well idea though like they're almost going to certainly pay larger amounts of, of money for certain products because they want to support you overall the global reach of spotify can make your book successful to millions of great new readers around the world and that's what i'm really excited about so what i want to talk about now are some of the strategies because something else i really liked about this session was that the publisher and the distributor were talking about some strategies that helps them to make the most of their audiobooks on spotify so the first one is content strategy so the first strategy that the session spoke about i do rather like because it is a really clever because it spoke about focusing on new releases and an author's backlist and this is why your author backlist is so important and so many people don't focus on it since um, listeners tend to listen to the new releases and then they fall in love with the author and they binge listen to the backlist allowing publishers and yes this does include you to maximize the sales and money yeah, that they earn from that one listener and this is what I'm really focused on building a, a strong backlist in ebook and all of the different print formats on the different retailers. So I can take advantage of this because if because if a reader devours one of my series, then there's options for them to devour more books. And this is another reason why I don't understand really why authors are so focused on marketing their first few books instead of writing more. Because unless you have about 20 books, as so many people say, then you really do lack discoverability. And then the second strategy is data. And this is <laughs> this is something that I love about podcasting. Is that another strategy that I want to quickly mention is that Spotify gives you so much great data. Because if you have a, a podcast, then you're somewhat familiar with this. Because the data I get from Spotify and all the different podcast um, things, though, is I get the country that them they live in i get gender age and what platform they're listening on there and the reason why this is amazing is that if i eventually decide to get into facebook ads which i won't i cannot see my idea of paid advertising is just like email blast at services so like, is that this is amazing though because this data can actually make advertising and book marketing a lot more effective and more targeted which of course as authors we all want we all want our um stuff to do better and then the last strategy is optimized content and this is always important to do on book retailers. In fact, I was talking to an author about metadata this week, though, so I really do recommend all the book metadata episode because it really does help you optimise your content. But I don't remember the distributor giving a perfect reason for this, but she said, to optimise audiobooks on Spotify, each track needs to be about three minutes, and this helps to maximise the royalties. Now, I don't know, but my thinking is, is that you would probably get paid a flat rate of so much per track on a Spotify. For example, one cent per track played. Hence, it, hence, it makes more sense to have 30 tracks than 10 longer tracks uh, because that gives you um, 30 cents compared to just 10 cents. And yes, that does seem tiny, but you've got to remember though, that this compounds over time though. And this is what I love at libraries and audiobooks though, because the micro payments uh, that you get through uh, cost per checkout can actually mount up to some very nice money over time though so also though spotify gives the, the listener a seamless egg experience so the listener doesn't even know whether that these tracks are only three minutes long so this is a massive tip that i want to share with you for for when that spotify becomes more accessible personally if we shift the focus to more practical terms I do not know how easy this is to do in real life because the distributor at the talk had an auto, like they had an automatic tour that did this for them. For us indies, I'm not sure if you had a 16 hour audio book, it would just be ridiculous. You could not break this in by hand into three minute chunks and it would, and not make a mistake like cutting a sentence in half. So 
I'm not really sure how that plays out practically yet. But hopefully, though, in the future, someone, know, someone though, will make an automatic tool or someone, to be honest, they might um, offer a, a service. I will not be that person. I would hate to chop audiobooks up for a living. <laughs> so uh, for the rest of the podcast episode, I uh, just want to list off a few other things that were because at the talk, some other things were um, mentioned, but they're not enough for me to go into great details about. So the first one is a uh, Instagram marketing seems to be seamless with uh, Spotify, so that's always good though. Um, so basically, Instagram can be really good to have audiobooks on uh, Spotify. Pre-saves. Now, these sound quite interesting because pre-saves might be available in the future. For future, though, because music artists, they're already taking advantage of it and this is already available for them. Because basically, if someone can pre-save or think of this as like pre-orders, so someone can pre-save your audiobook before it's released, so you can get some royalties early, uh, well, early though, or like on like release day, or it reminds the listener to read the audiobook, so you don't lose that on potential royalties. So I don't, so to be honest, I'm not sure how that works, but I think the pre-save idea is a really interesting idea that I would actually really, that I would actually really like. Okay, so audiobook sales are still growing on other platforms. And this is the thing about multiple streams of income and are being wide and not on one platform because cause like, even though your income may not be that amazing on a Spotify though, you're still going to get nice chunks of money from a credit sales and a la carte models on the different retailers. So that's something to think about. So this is not this big apocalyptic thing. This is something that will help grow the audiobook market. And interestingly though, lots of genres perform well regardless of the demographic and the age so no spotify is not just a, a young person thing so this is something very important to take a note of and then the last one is germany is spotify's biggest market so it will be extremely and i do mean this <laughs> this could actually be amazing to see how this plays out because my thought is that will spotify become the audible of germany and this I think will this I think it would be so interesting though. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. I know I did. I absolutely I I absolutely I love this talk and I really do want to see a Spotify help us to reach more people all over the world because we are global authors and that's what we do. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. If you know someone who would find today's episode useful, please share it with them. I'm always really grateful when you wonderful people help spread the word about the podcast. Also, please check out Hugh and Brandon for authors. How to be human in an AI world. So, have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thanks uh, for listening today. I hope you found it useful. For more information, please go to theglobalauthor.com. And if you want to connect, then please reach out to me on Twitter at The Global Author. And you can find me on Facebook. For your free and exclusive Global Author video training, please go to theglobalauthor.com forward slash free. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.